As I mentioned in my Kenkabansho video, Tomoyuki Matsumoto left the series after 2 to make Shinjuku no Okami, which took a while. He would then return to write 4, but then left again to make Gachitora Abarembo Kyoshi in high school, before returning again to direct the 6th game. But would you believe that Gachitora is better than any of the Kenkabansho games? You play as Tora Okaji, underboss of the Okami family in the somewhere city of Rugamine. オオカミ組は he finds out that his boss is sick and that the only doctor that could treat him lives in Germany, which leaves him desperate to find a way to help. Just as he's about to hurl from too much drinking, he gets hit by a car. The car was transporting Katayama, principal at a local high school. Toro refused getting driven to the hospital, so instead wakes up by the school where he sees a student on the top of the roof about to jump, so he rushes to get her autograph because she's Yui Suehiro, an idol that his boss likes, and voiced by Rie Kugimiya, aka Haruka from Yakuza. Eventually, it gets through his head what's going on. And after a battle, which I'll go into later, he offers to help her out. A paparazzi has gotten embarrassing photos of Yui, and he chases him down and gets them back to her. Upon which point she falls off the roof anyway, and he catches her. As the reporters gather around, Yui, not wanting to out him as a Yakuza, which would lead to even more press, says that he's a teacher. Huh? A snap decision that will affect the rest of his life, as well as the game. Toro makes a deal with the principal. He becomes a teacher at the school in exchange for the principal using his contacts to get that specialist doctor over to Japan. The two conditions are that he can't reveal his being a Yakuza, nor can he ever hit a student. He's also encouraged to help the students with their problems, whatever they may be. At least the ones with a future. <laughs> Prove me wrong, kids! Prove me wrong! To make the first stipulation easier, Toro asks his boss to expel him. For the second, he'll have to rely on his own self-control, something he doesn't have that much of. Now back to the battles, which are a bit different than what you'd expect. Well, on the one hand there are regular fights, but there aren't that many. I counted a total of 12 during my playthrough. The main method of battle is what the game dubs Soul Nude Battle. Technically, you only discuss things using words, you and your opponent standing still in the background. However, in the foreground is a representation of said discussion, which takes the form of hand-to-hand -hand combat. You hit your opponent and you say something. They hit you and they retort. When you've worn down their life bar, they get defensive. 
and encase themselves in a globe of ice or do something else wacky. Here you have to break through their defenses with more attacks, deliver a phoenix right looking zinger, and then they either lose the discussion or go on to their next life bar. That depends on the amount of little soul icons they have. The nude part of the soul nude battle only comes to play in the boss battles against the 8 students that they decided to make proper characters, as well as one of the teachers. These battles end with their final argument, which you have to crush with your tiger spirit, upon which time they go naked and admit something to themselves. With streaks of light covering the naughty bits of course, but I still had to censor more to escape the algorithm. I much appreciate the little bit of psychology that these battles bring, even though it's still mostly played for laughs, there's always that serious core to the students and their problems. And their problems and personalities are reflected in how they battle too. For example, Yui the Idol floats around with microphones and music notes, Asami who's poor walks around with a big money purse and tries to suck you in, and so on. Gachitora also acts a bit like an RPG in the sense that you level up your attributes by fighting, and there are random encounters in both the school and the town. You level up your body, which is your defense slash health, your heart, which is your words, that you use kind of like magic, and your technique, which leads to more attacks. These are less like Kenka Bancho and more like Shinjuku no Okami, in that you pick a fighting style, and then you unlock more attacks as you go, but you can't mix and match. I played for a long time with the starting Yakuza style, but later switched to the Karate style, which I found to be superior. Square and X are your light and heavy attacks respectively. You can hold down Triangle for a literal charge attack, Circle for a grab attack that's rather powerful, and block with R. If you block with the right timing, you parry, which comes in handy. The random encounters take the form of students and town folk, who approach you demanding your advice, which leads to a discussion battle where they, during their defensive periods, do things like swing on swings, stomp on the ground, ride in teacups, run around flailing their arms like kids, and more. The school nurse, um writes a giant syringe, like it was the missile from Dr. Strangelove or something. Nothing strange there. The people in the random encounters have some wacky motivations, although being hungry, lonely, bored or generally nervous are the most common ones, but there's also being constipated. Another element to the game is actually being a teacher. From doing side missions and picking stuff up off the streets and floors, you get material for classes, with the goal being to get all the students to graduate at the end of the game slash school year. This doubles as the game's completion aspect, as to get access to many classes you need to do stuff like eat at every restaurant, catch every kind of fish, and so on. But conducting the classes themselves is easy. Toro just goes up to the podium and drops some knowledge on the kids, be it knowledge worthy or not. Something that Ken Kabansho had that Gachitora doesn't is ambitions to be open world. Even the more segmented PSP games are more like that than this. Here you select areas from the town map and they're pretty small with the school probably being the biggest. I do kind of miss that. Gachitora does have a lot of mini games, however. Definitely more than Ken Kabansho ever did. There's fishing. Buying and selling stuff online. Tennis. Martial arts sparring in school. And you can go to the movies in town and watch clips from, for instance, King Kabancho 5, Duncan Rompa, and the Fuji Q theme park, who apparently sponsored the game. On that topic, there's also the Circle K and Sunkus convenience stores, Steak Nodon, Fishing Shop, Tackleberry, and clothes from Right On. But back to minigames. Baseball and the 2D shooter Star Challenger, you can play freely after doing them once each in the storyline. Then there's the Maid Cafe, where you can play cards, 
take a quiz under the looming danger of a big balloon filled with what I really really hope is milk, as well as take photos. Then there are the ones that only turn up during the storyline, and I'll take this opportunity to go into spoilers, so skip to here if you don't want to know. With Yui, there's actually nothing to spoil beyond what I've already said. Maybe Spike couldn't afford that much of her talent? Because other than in the first chapter, she maybe only has a handful of lines throughout the game. Yoichi Nekota is a regular guy with a monster parent, who threatens to use the PTA to get Toro fired when Yoichi stops coming to school. Toro, with the help of the school reporter Nezu, blackmail his mother via a smooth-talking minigame, while Nezu takes photos of them in front of a love hotel to use as leverage. Nezu, meanwhile, is unpopular among the other students because he's regarded as a snitch. The ensuing bullying makes him want to give up on his vocation. His boss fight is tricky because he uses his camera, which traps you in a photograph while he walks slowly over to you to smack you with a bat, and if you wiggle your way out, he just runs back to his tripod, usually before you can get more than one hit in. Moe Asami faints shortly after almost coming late to school. She's barely eating because she's poor, due to her single father being a homeless bum. After trying to help her using insurance fraud, which doesn't go over well with the teacher slash love interest Shingo, ほら、三万。一歩間違うと死んじゃうから、気をつけてやれよ、アサミ。ちょっとガジ先生、アサミさんに当たりやしろと言うんですかそんなことを教師であるあなたが教えてどうするんですかちょ、しょうがねえだろ
組織内で一目置かれる男数年前まで弱小団体だった横手組を現在のチームで押し上げたのは組長ではなく可能であると言われている And their presence has been made known several times during the game up to this point. Kano has been trying to convince the principal to sell the deed to the land that the school is on so that the Yokote can tear it down and build Japan's first casino on the land. They have backing from the city's corrupt mayor, even. The vice principal is also on their side, although he is so under threat. Yumi goes so far as to hire a street gang to fake kidnap her in order to have them beat Toro up or even kill him, which she allows them to do for her sake. They don't succeed though, and Yumi tries to finish the job, wanting revenge for her brother. In the ensuing discussion, Kazuya fights for her when she's in the defensive state, and she crawls into his arms for the final attack, which is pretty sad. Although I like how one of his attacks is just like Kazuya from Tekken. The despondent Yumi then threatens to kill herself. She says she doesn't care about what happens to her at all without Kazuya. Toro decides to test her self destructive resolve. What follows is a risque minigame that can definitely be taken the wrong way. It's a live stream strip session where you have to pick excited chat lines to raise the tension until she reaches her limit. The objective, in other words, isn't objectification, but to force some self respect out of her. We also learn later that the stream wasn't actually live, it cut out before it really started. In the end, she learns Toro was Kazuya's friend and that he didn't have any hand in his death, and she forgives him. This confuses Ishikawa, who had been collaborating with her to bring him down, so he has to take things into his own hands now that he's on his own. But Ishikawa doesn't have any more ideas, really. Instead, he gets manipulated by the vice principal, who lets him think that he can get him back into the baseball club that he was kicked out from. If he helps him, plant a bomb at the school. Ishikawa complies, but then when he realizes that the school will be full of people when it goes off, he changes his mind. He tells Toro, who subsequently breaks the no hitting policy. They find the bomb and defuse it via another story exclusive minigame, one involving timing, which I'm not very good at. So here, I had to take advantage of the game's function of skipping minigames after failing a few times. Doesn't feel good to do, but I'm glad the option is there. After the defusal, Ishikawa tells his backstory of his friend who played baseball with him until he was basically bullied by the baseball teacher, whereupon he committed suicide. Ishikawa punched the teacher and got kicked out. Toro helps him get a tryout at the local baseball club, which he fails, but still, he's happy that he gave it another try and he'll keep training for the next chance. Finally then, Kano is running out of options and fakes a school trip in order to kidnap the whole class and use them as hostages using a second bomb. Toro gives chase, but is at his mercy, until the Okami family as well as the police show up. The final battle then ensues, which understandably but unfortunately is just two regular battles. There's no discussing with the main villain. The music by the way is really good. The battle themes in particular are great. The best being the final boss theme, which is kind of unfortunate since you only get to hear it once. The other battle themes are no slouches either, though. The regular fight theme is only okay. The minigame theme is very good. The Maid Cafe song is too. While they do repeat a lot, the music heard during various plot points are good too. 
The main theme of the game, Core, heard in all the episode credits, was written by Tomaso himself and sung by Sak. Kachitora is quite a funny game, from the manga-inspired facial expressions that Toro makes, to the wacky stuff that people do in the discussion battles, to certain scenes during the plot. でも、バカ。ガラカはないで。あ、そんな無理。え?ここか。ここがいいのか。うりうり。あ、いきなりそんな下から。こんなんちまちまやってられっか。行っちゃうぞ。じゃあ、そっと。It's right up my alley. And it might be up yours too, especially if you played a Yakuza game before. Some additional information? There was a demo released, which you can actually still download from their website. It has a single, non-story-connected student to help who got robbed of her tuna that she needs for her father's restaurant. After fighting her and her fish helpers, you go fish one up for her. And that's the end. The Maid Cafe minigame was later that same year made into a separate digital-only game called Maid Paradise Mezase Maid No. 1 adding Yui and a new girl. With the PSP store down now though, I'm not sure if this game is lost or not. Having a save file from the demo unlocks a 40,000 yen present in the regular game, and a save from Kenkamansho 5 unlocks the recent hairstyle. A Danganronpa save unlocks a Monokuma costume, what else? Kenkabansho 6 later had the same thing. The freelance reporter character Minorikawa is the daughter of the reporter with the same last name in 428 Shibuya Scramble. This because the producer Terazawa was a big fan, and he got permission from Chansoft. Spike then merged with Chansoft in 2012, so this fact is now 100% canon. There were some voice actor crossover from Kenkabansho. The villain Kano's actor played the Skeban Hen villain in Kenkabansho 1, as well as main character Tanaka in 2, and Ishikawa's actor played Tanaka in 1 and the villain Ryo in 2. This is easily my favorite PSP game, coming in ahead of such games as Kinkabansha 4 and the second Yakuza spin-off. Graphics, music, story, humor, this game has it all, more or less. Tomozo's finest work, and one of my new favorite games.